1915, David Wark Griffith did Birth of a Nation, and that became the staple of the American war film. The war films have always been so attractive to American audiences because dramatically they're at the highest stakes possible. Who lives and who dies? You can't get any higher than that. Authenticity is uh, very important, particularly with armored or tracked vehicles, because just by looking at them, you can realize the death and destruction that that weapon can wreak in just one shot. Well, what you see sometimes on a screen is not what you really get. And so a lot of the tanks that we have, we had to manufacture. They resemble and they look like a tank, but they're really not tanks. Right now, we got uh, 400 vehicles in our inventory. We could have a war of any era. So we could go from, uh, from World War II to uh, the current wars. Now this looks like a Hummer, but it's really actually a mock-up of a Hummer. Everybody remembers uh, the 4077 MASH series. It's all original. It's a uh, 1942 Dodge. What we're looking at here is uh, a German Panzer tank, 1940. And what we did, we took the old Sherman tank and we cut off the tops of these things and took this body off of this tank and made these bodies on this. This uh, vehicle here is called a Tetra. It was made in Czechoslovakia by the Porsche company. It was made famous for us in the movie Lost World. It doesn't look like a Porsche, but it rides like a Porsche. What we have here is our row of Jeeps. Actually, they're little celebrities. Everybody in Hollywood's just about drove these things from the MASH series to Baba Black Sheep to the movie MacArthur, G.I. Jane, uh, Escape from L.A. Whatever you can create, you try to, to get it on film, and that's, uh, that's what we try to do. To make gunfire look real in the movies, what they use is real guns, only instead of live ammunition, they use blanks. And uh, even in the military and law enforcement, when they use them, uh, there's always a chance of injury because the powder comes out hot and it burns. And usually there's a wadding inside that the wadding comes out and it's a projectile. Besides possible injury, there's federal regulations or state regulations. You have to be licensed to have real weapons on the set and there's the noise to the actor's ears and the crew. Another thing is when you're using weapons uh, that are firing blanks, they don't always function correctly, especially automatics. Go, go, go! We created the non-gun because of a lot of injuries that were taking place in the industry. Uh, we made a lot of these guns from scratch. We currently have 42 makes and models, and that includes the revolver, uh, shotguns, assault rifles, uh, regular rifles, and all the different types of machine guns. Uh, this is a Mac 10 in uh, non-gun version. Inside, we have a computer circuit. Uh, these are the uh, safety blanks. They're a pyrotechnic device which simulates gunfire flashes. Uh, this is a Beretta, model 92, a uh, non-gun version. We have the electronics package located within the frame of the gun. The nose cone comes off, the battery's in the handle. Well, th this is a device which you could consider as being an electronic toy. Some are made out of plastic and some are made out of uh, aluminum. And the end result is a perfect match for a real gun. This is a double barrel 12 gauge and non-gun version. And the gun breaks down for real easy reloading, just like this. And here's your blanks right here. And you just plug in and plug out with the realism of being able to load and unload on camera. It just works marvelously. And it's safe to the actors. It's a very modern technology being used in an old-fashioned weapon.